Um, Olivia, I cosplay as her. I have her. I kind of had to make her outfit because I bought an outfit and it was shit. Um, but I crafted, like, I grabbed materials and I sort of, and I bought some other stuff and I sort of handcrafted it to be more Olivia like. And it looks so much better now. I gotta fix a part of it because part of it ripped at, from the last convention I went to. But I love cosplaying as Olivia. She's my baby girl. I love her. <laughs> and instead of her um, rings or bangles, whatever you call them, I have tambourines to replace them. It's great. But I love Olivia a lot. Oh, so you switch her to another unit to get stats and stuff, and then switch her back to Dancer. That's how I think you would do it, because you don't want to lose the singing ability. Of course, my boyfriend's like, nah, she too OP. You need her just in the other, the staff class. <laughs> I'm blanking on class names right now. But yeah. Um, but me, I'm like, I want the singing ability. I need that. What do you mean? <laughs> But it just depends on how people play. very not ladylike. <laughs> I'm a little lady. Oh, I need to play Little Miss Fortune again. <laughs> Every time I think I say lady, I'm like, little lady. You know what? Fair. Fates was very... It could have been great. It could have been. Especially after how Awakening revived the franchise. And then it just hell flat it it truly did i had the delphi shield bitch gosh darn man <laughs> performed by a lady therefore lady like i like that thank you <laughs> No, but like, they tried too hard. They tried too hard to replicate the beauty that was Awakening without fully understanding why Awakening did as well as it did and therefore just fell short. And that's what's upsetting because I think, because Fates in some cases did try to do new things. Um, they had a couple of new concepts. So it's not like they're incapable of new concepts. It's just, just, some of the stuff was just, it's like they added something because it worked in Fates, but they didn't understand why it worked in Fates. So therefore it just was tacky or sucked. And I, it's so disappointing. Cause I don't mind Fates. I like the characters. Corrin's a little, eh, protagonist go. Not the worst, but definitely not great. But I was okay with Corrin. And then just the children thing, deep the deep realms, whatever. Total bullshit. We didn't need the deep realms. I the children are cute and everything. The deep realms was just such bullshit. <laughs> One of the worst things they tried to replicate from Awakening. That did not work. <laughs> Just yikes, man. Just yikes. I have not been saving. I don't want to lose anyone or repeat anything. Thank you. Yep. Not gonna go well, but let's go. Oh, hit two. Yeah, either time, do the time skip again. Don't, we know you're trying to replicate fates. Just be bold or go home. Do the time skip thing again. Um. Oh, 
no. Yeah, okay. What you're saying, that's actually what I would have preferred in Fates, was if they did, like, a, a few years later, oh no, the war wasn't quite resolved, so now the kids have to deal with it, or, or something, or something new, or whatever. Like, yeah, like the genealogy style. I would have loved that in Fates. That would have been awesome. And they did it. <laughs> and they did it. Uh... Otherwise, I would have been okay if they did the Awakening thing where it was like alternate timeline kind of thing, like came back in time. Like, I wouldn't have mind that as much if they did it again. Would have been like repetitive, but sure would have made a whole, whole lot more sense than the uh, um, Deep Rums bullshit. <laughs> Okay, that side's progressing along. Actually, I'm gonna do this. Oh, that doesn't do a whole lot. Eh. Okay. Okay, hold on. Welp. <gasps> yeah, oh my word, that would be amazing! Um, cause I know with the original Game Boys, if you played seven and then played six on the same system, the stats of the kid units were affected by the stats of the um, seven units. Um, but obviously I can't replicate that here because it's an emulator and I don't think there's a way to like connect those things. Um, but that was cool and that would be awesome if like choices you make in seven affected how things went in six. Granted, it might change some like story aspects, but Damn, would that be cool. <clears throat> I know you can't really connect the two games just because there's so many chapters on both sides. Yeah, it is a thing. I remember reading it somewhere. Um, but of course, 6 was never released in the US so I never could test that or anything. It was just something I heard about years later when I was figuring out, you know, oh, there's a 6. Oh, there's much older games, because 7 for the US, that was just called Fire Emblem. That's it. It wasn't called Fire Emblem 7, it was just called Fire Emblem in the US. So it made it seem like it was the first of the series, when in reality, that's totally not the case. Yes, I have my baby Calico. This is Zoe. It's my baby. She probably wants treats. Are you hungry? Even though you had dinner and probably a snack at this point? You've oh you've had your you've had your ten o'clock snack at this point. You're fine. It was just the first to be translated. Exactly. That's that's literally all it was. It was the first to be translated and brought to America. That's it. <laughs> that was the only thing first about it. But little baby me didn't care on my first red Game Boy flip Game Boy thing. Didn't care. I loved it. I replayed that on my system seven or eight times, and that was without scum saving and completely restarting chapters because units would keep dying, and I refused to let anyone die. <laughs> and that's why I justify scum saving now with emulators because I've earned my right. <laughs> Um, partially true, it's very rare for a calico to be born male. It's a lot more common for them to be females, but um, male calicos are super rare to be born. That's why if you do have a male calico, it's considered very good luck, especially in Japan. It's why you might see those like calico um, statues and stuff like that. It's because it's a symbol of good luck because of you know, how rare they are. Exactly. 
Exactly! I had never understood people were like, oh, you died? Okay, bye! I'm like, no! Granted, even if a character pissed me off, I'd be like, I fucking hate you for refuse to let you die! Because then it feels like I failed, and I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Ow! I did not know that. Marth's story was the only one, the only Fire Emblem game I did not like. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to replay it at some point just to see if that sentiment still holds. But when I first tried to play it in like middle school or high school, could not get into it. Did not like it. I just I never finished it. Never got far, and I was just like, I hate I hate this game. Oh, could not do it. Could not do it. Anyway, are we dying? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good. Oops. Whoops. Ah, oh, she's almost out of magic. Oh, they have not. The art style they picked for it. The graphics for it. Ugh, like the portraits. Totally fine. Did not mind it. But the, the graphics they picked play-wise. Oh, it's kind of gross. I hate it. I can't. Oh, it's kind of gross. <laughs> and I know that sounds shallow. I I am totally aware it is. I just mm. <laughs> it's not my cup of tea. Oh, she's almost out of magic too. Fuck, I did not stock up well. Uh, remake I'm talking about specifically when it comes to Marth's story. The original one I have not played. I watched some of another Fire Emblem streamer uh, by the name of Corporal Q. Um, I don't know if um, you know of them, but um, they've been going through the Fire Emblem games in order, as in from the very first Fire Emblem game up to wherever they are at now. I think they're at Genealogy, but I'm not sure if they finished that already or not. Uh, no, actually, there's no way they finished. Those chapter maps are ridiculously long. Um, yeah, so you might know who I'm talking about. Um, but I watched him play a little bit of the original Marth story, but I haven't played anything older than Six. Six is the oldest Fire Emblem game I've played. I mainly talk about the remake on the th 3DS or th DS. Was that 3D? I think it was regular DS. I don't think it was 3DS, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I know I, I own the copy of it. It's in my drawer of games, but I uh, can't remember which version it was for. I think for certain maps, it'd be really cool. Um, or certain chapters, I should say. I don't think we should have all of it. Because for the entire game to be that, I think it'd be a little much. But for certain chapters to be, like, longer than others, that'd be great. It'd be so fun. Especially for, like, like the boss ones or, like, the big war scale kind of feeling. That'd be great. Need to borrow the. Put her in here. <laughs> what? Are you... I'm not putting Put her... her in here. No. <laughs> it's, it's way too small. Try it anyway. She'll, she'll, she'll make it work. She's fat, and you're gonna suffocate. Try it anyways. <laughs> what Jack Sketcher is like most of the time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so 
sorry for that unwanted break, but that was just too funny. I had to show that off. Plus, he was like, put her in my sweater. Put her in there. She's not gonna fit. She's too fat. I don't care. Put her in. We're gonna vibe. <laughs> Uh, what was 12? Was 12 the, like, was it a direct sequel to the Marth one? Or was that something different? Almost never used to make the pirate ship maps bigger. There totally should be a reason to, though. Like, honestly. Yeah, that was the f okay. If I'm not mistaken, the Marth sequel was the first time we had a tactician character, no? Or at least it was the first one where you had a um customizable tactician character. I think I could be wrong, but I swear I remember seeing that somewhere. Oh, that's what I wanted. I still don't know what traps this map was talking about. Like, I haven't stumbled across any yet. I'm gonna say that now, yet. Don't want to jinx myself. And I don't know what to do with the um, thieves. If the thieves are supposed to like, land on one, they're gonna go disarm trap or whatever. Well. That's why we don't use Marth for anything. Yeah, honestly. I, I, ha I have Roy be useful for one thing, and then it's like, death. It's like, alright then. Oh, I didn't realize he's being attacked by the archer. That's probably didn't help my case. You know what? I'm gonna look that up real quick because I'm too curious. I swear, uh, Fire Emblem 12 player character. Yeah, it is in the sequel. You get to create your character, your a player character. I don't know if it's a tactician character, but it's definitely a player character. And I think it's the first time you see the option. Like I know Awakening was like, whoa, revolutionary, but it's like, it's existed before. Um. And then we know the tactician character in Seven is just a person. It's not like an actual play a playable unit, but like they exist. They talk to you and acknowledge you. Except fucking Hector, the, 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 the ungrateful bastard. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was cool. And you could choose classes. You could you could choose to be what class you wanted. So that's why I'm not sure if it's technically a tactician character or just a playable character. Um. So, so you could be like, I could choose symbols to make your name, it was katakana, hiragana, or miscellaneous symbols. Uh, I picked your gender. Males could be mercenary, knight, cavalier, fighter, archer, or mage. Females could choose to be myrmidon, pegasus knight, cavalier, archer, or mage. Uh, my unit could be reclassed like a normal character, so the starting class for male is therefore more important since it decides their reclass set at least until you've been in hard mode starting class also decides the clothes that my unit wears 13 hairstyles 10 hair colors and 10 eye styles to choose from it's mainly for aesthetic purposes or amusement although some characters may refer to my unit differently depending on certain aspects of their appearance 
uh, fortune, decide my unit's past, present, and future. This affects their st starting stats and, more importantly, their growth rates. Know that the past, present, and future combination cannot include choices that award the same type of stat slash growth bonus. Uh, you can't pick... Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so past, you could be a merchant's child, a clergy child, an orphan, a farmer's child, or a noble's child, and those gave different skills. Present... Beautiful, wise, diverse, kind, strong, which all affect future stats. And then future, it, it doesn't give you st stat bonuses, but it gives you growth bonuses. So there's humanitarian, honorable, truth seeker, rich, or recluse. This is so fucking cool. <laughs> and then you get like stats obviously based on what kind of class you pick, but then the bonuses are like based on how you pick. As the game progresses, certain characters with just new hairstyles or eye styles. Because, you know, eyeballs, you can just magically transform. No big deal. <laughs> just get some surgery. You're fine. Um, at the end of the chapter. To try out the new style, choose the option to the left. Yes. And it will kick into effect from the beginning of the next chapter. Oh. Upon the next chapter's end, Marth will ask my unit if they want to keep the style or not. To remove it, choose the first option. Otherwise, if the style is kept, it will permanently overwrite my unit's previous hair slash eye style. Um, and what gets um, recommended is a headband, a haircut, bishop hat, masquerade ball mask, ooh, tiki's hairstyle and hairpiece, or animal skin hat. That's awesome. <laughs> um the magic of mascara exactly listen if the church finds out <laughs> girls can shape shape we're over <laughs> it can't be found out Males either. If guys know how to know their makeup good. They can't know. They, no one can know that it, it's shape-shifting abilities. <laughs> uh, prefer base stats or growth weights when choosing characters? Um, I try to pay attention to both. But base stats help me a lot. Um, depending at what level they're at. If they're at level 1, I, for me it's really hard to say. Unless some stat is like ridiculously high um but further along the line by like level 10 i want to say i kind of have a better feeling for um what a unit's gonna be like further down the road um uh, but growth rates most of the time i don't know what the growth rates typically are i'd have to like google it and like research like what growth rates typically are for characters but most of the time i just kind of look at how the base stats are are going up and i kind of make a choice from there or just basically how they're performing for me um but as far as just picking a character goes from the get-go i just kind of do my best guess and go from there Russian roulette. Who's gonna get hit first? I'm gonna get through this turn, and then I'm probably gonna switch on over to Among Us. Just so everyone's aware. Um, just because I want to talk with my friends and do stupid shit. <laughs> Wait. Uh, yes. crit oh it was so subtle but it was a crit animation at one percent oh. oh good job baby girl i'm so proud of you oh that was beautiful oh, i didn't realize she could crit <laughs> it was so it was a so subtle of an animation for the crit but damn what a great time to have that crit happen am i right like oh Beautiful. I don't want that to go any other way. <laughs> I 
Oh, right, I have to redo this. We... I was slightly paranoid of, but that's okay. And then Archer's gonna do that, which is laughable considering boars. Solid unit. Just for the fucking miss. I love it. <laughs> I was so dramatic and my heart stopped like, no, boys. And then it just missed. Oh, please do the same thing again. Oh, please. Oh, please. I want to see this fail. <laughs> what a beast. I love him so much. <laughs> 